I, I really did like the uh, idea of talking about different kinds of faith, yeah. uh, which which you did. I, I want to focus on two of those in, in the next question. Um, how have your religious faith and your faith in our democracy changed across the years, and what were the catalysts for the changes? Well, I've learned both. Uh, I've written two books with the title Faith in them. The first was after I left the White House. And I, in a memoir I wrote about my years in the White House, uh, I wrote a book called Keeping Faith. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, a study of how I tried to keep faith with the American people who trusted me to be their leader. And then the next one was 15 years later when I wrote a book called Living Faith, mostly about my religious faith. Mm -hmm. But I, I think those are the two extreme definitions of faith. You have faith in God, faith in, in principles like democracy, freedom, telling the truth, right. uh, education, your parents, and so forth. And you also have to keep faith with people who trust you. So there are two different definitions of faith, but there are a lot of meanings of faith. And so that's what made the book so difficult for me to write and possibly for some people to read, uh, was all these various definitions of the meaning of faith. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel that uh, over a period of my fortunately long life so far, that uh, I have continued to learn about both aspects of faith mm -hmm. and, and the various nuances of the word. So I, I found that my faith in God was a overwhelming uh, faith on which I could always depend. Faith in God, faith in Jesus Christ, and faith in the truisms of, of my religion. Mm -hmm. When you were in the White House, um, was there one moment, or maybe more moments I could imagine, um, when you were aware more than ever of the importance of faith and your critical need for faith at that time. Yeah, I prayed more in that four years that I was in the White House than I did any other period of my life. You know, I was really taken aback and shocked and and uh, overwhelmed with, um, with a need for prayer when I first was elected before I was inaugurated president. I got a briefing from the military leaders and they told me about the ravages of uh, nuclear warfare. I had under my control, I won't say exactly how many, it's still confidential, but uh, more than 15,000 nuclear weapons. And Brezhnev, the president of Russia, of Soviet Union then, had the same. And, and I was reminded that if we did start a nuclear war, or which applies to every president since then, that we could wipe out every living thing on Earth. Um, except maybe microbes and, and germs uh, because of the direct explosions of nuclear weapons and the radioactive fallout and, and the obscuring the sun for weeks on end from shining on the earth because of clouds of dust and, and smoke and so forth. So I was aware that I had under my control the ability potentially of uh, of destroying human life. Mm -hmm. And and every president since then has shared that responsibility. And so I, I, I have prayed during my time and I have prayed for other presidents as well to refrain from that uh, catastrophic decision. Yeah. In 2005, you wrote a book entitled Our Endangered Values, a yes. uh, good book. Um, what is the relationship between faith and values? Well, I think I could answer that best by the advice that my favorite high school teacher gave me, Miss Julia Coleman. She used to tell our students, we must welcome change or accommodate change and still cling to values that never change. Values like truth and integrity and so forth, yeah. uh, democracy, freedom. And, and so I think that is been the uh, guiding light that, that I have mentioned more in my classes. I've been a professor now at Emory University for 36 years. 
And, uh, and, and when I teach Sunday school, I frequently refer to Ms. Julia's advice too. We have to accommodate the times that change and welcome change, in, in a matter of fact. But at the same time, uh, despite those changes that we have to accommodate, uh, we need to cling to principles that never do change. Yeah. Our belief in God, our belief in Jesus Christ, our belief in the truth. Uh, I would say that one of the most difficult that our country has faced over a period of uh, two couple of generations has been a faith in the um, equality of people in the eyes of God. I remember the verse in Galatians, I believe, wh where it says that there is no difference in the eyes of God uh, between a, a Gentile and a Jew. There's no difference between a slave and a master. There's no difference between a man and a woman. We're all equal in the eyes of God to our faith in Jesus Christ. And, and that equality struggle has been a very difficult thing for us in the past uh, with the Civil War and so forth, uh, and it's, it's, we're struggling with it still. And not only in this country, but in other countries as well. So j just to realize that we have a responsibility on our own selves of treating other people as equals in the eyes of God, and uh, someday, I think in order to avoid uh, destruction from nuclear weapons or other possible sources, uh, we are going to have to learn how to accommodate uh, our differences with our enemies uh, and uh, learn how to care for one another as Jesus taught. We welcome uh, his advice to love not only our neighbors and our friends, people who are lovable, who love us back, but also love our enemies our, and, yeah. and, and, and love all everyone. So I think that that is a transition that the human race has never yet made. We, we try to keep those truisms alive, but it's very difficult to put it into practice and to keep it in practice, particularly when you get to the political realm. So now we see today, I think, a threat of a warfare they could deteriorate in a nuclear war between us and, this, and Russia or between us and North Korea and so yeah. forth. And, and I pray that, was, that won't happen.